Okay, starting out on a 650 Mighty Demon carburetor, we want to make sure the carburetor is right. The numbers are stamped right on the air horn. Make sure they coincide with the tag, which is a 528 or the box. Or check the catalog and make sure that the number identification is correct for the carburetor. Start out by removing the float bowls. I use an electric wrench. I suggest you use just a socket or a T-wrench. This machine is set up for about four or five pounds of torque, so it works real well. Take them off, tighten them up to the right set. Get your four screws out. Make sure you don't lose the gaskets on the little gaskets here that seal the float bowl or you'll have a leak. Spin them out, set them aside. Take your flat screwdriver. There's a notch right here in the float bowl. Just give it a little twist and it pops right off. And you have your metering block. Most of the time they'll just pop off, but if they don't, you can just grab it with the wrench, with the screwdriver. Okay, once we get the bowl off, we can just pop on the gasket and remove the metering block. This is the metering block. Here's your jets. This is the vent to allow air into the float bowl. We'll set that aside for now. Let's check the float. We want to make sure the float is nice and square and flat. If it's a little bit crooked like this one, just give it a little gentle tweak until it levels up. Use the bowl screw to adjust the float. This one is set too high. It comes in, it'll raise the float. The float level will show too high here. So we need to lower the float. It's very simple. Back off the lock nut. Let's give it a couple of turns. 5 eighths wrench. And you can see it moving as we go here. Double check it. Right on. You just want it to touch. That'll give you a real close adjustment. Okay, well, we've got the float bowl off. Let's double check and service the accelerator pump. Just make sure the four screws are tight. Check the pump. Applying a little bit of pressure. Put your finger over the feed hole. Put some pressure on it. Let your finger up. You'll hear it pump. That's perfect. She's ready to go. Put it back together. Hold the float bowl the right way up. Vent to the top. Slide it together. These pins will line it up. Hold your accelerator pump arm up. Push the float, the pump down. And just slide it in there. And it'll pop right into place for you. Put your bowl screws back. Yeah. Tighten up your bowl screws. Always go corner to corner. Don't put a lot of torque on. All the bolts here. Just get them snug. And you should use a T-wrench like this, not like this. I've been doing this for years. I know how much torque to put on them. I've been using this wrench for a long time. Again, corner to corner. Don't tighten one side down or the top down. That side's complete. Check the operation of our accelerator pump. It's great. Let's check it for adjustment. We go wide open throttle. Push down on the arm. And we should have just a little bit of slack, just like you see there. Should be tight at the top. Perfect. Check it. Hold your fingers under the squirter. Pump it. You can feel the pressure in here. The side of the float bowl is slightly different. This is where you have in your meeting block your power valve. Your power valve can be checked simply by putting a little vacuum on here. Or if you watch the button here, which releases the fuel. There you go. See, it's moving fine, and it's not leaking. So, very seldom we have any problems with these. We've already gone through this float bowl, checked out the accelerator pumps, we've checked our power valve, we've checked our metering block, we've set and squared the float, we've checked for any possible debris left over from the manufacturing process, and it's simply reassembled, just like on the secondary side. Remember to lift your throttle arm, line up the pins, and it slides together. Mighty Demons are well machined and the screws will usually just spin in with your finger. Once you get one in, okay, you'll just that. check all our locks. Our float locks are right here. Remember, when you're adjusting the float level, you turn the nut clockwise to lower the float, counterclockwise to raise the float. When you raise the float, it will respond immediately. When you lower the float, the engine must burn the fuel in the float bowl before it will indicate as to where your level is. So be patient. Take your uh, time. Let's finish up this step by double checking everything. Let's make sure that our float bowl locks are tight. Our accelerator pump screws are snug. Make sure you don't over tighten them. They're small gaskets top and bottom. So you don't want to over tighten them. 
and then all the way back across the carburetor. Now we'll start out here in the next step. We want to check all of the air bleeds. The inner bleeds are for the high speed. The outer bleeds are for the idle. You just want to make sure that those are nice and snug in there. Don't over tighten them again. They're just brass fitting, so we just check them all just like that. Make sure they're tight. And they all appear to be just fine. Okay, now we're going to start on our adjustments on the carburetor. We're going to start out with the primary float bowl. We're going to screw the screw all the way into bottom. These have got soft little rubber donuts on there, the low rings, so we want to make sure we don't damage it. Just snug it up, go back and forth a couple of times. Once we establish where we have it at bottom, then on the primary side, on this particular carburetor, which is a 650 Mighty Demon, we're going to give it three quarters of a turn open. So we go half, three quarters. Do the same thing on the other side, bottom the screw, work it down tight, and then bring it back three quarters of a turn, and that side is set. On the back, we're going to set it at 5 eighths. Same procedure, all the way down, bottom the screw, half, 5 eighths. Same thing on the other side, half, 5 eighths. Now our four corners are set. Next thing we're going to adjust is the idle speed. We can start either side of the carburetor. This is the secondary side. And what we're going to do here, we're going to back the idle speed way down until the throttle shaft is bottomed and stopped on the stop down here. Right. So once we've got it backed all the way off, as it explains in my tuning guide, slide a piece of paper between the stop and the screw and tighten the screw up until it just catches the paper And that is at zero. Now for the secondary side, I'm going to put five eighths of a turn, just like we did on the idle speed screw or the idle mixture screws. So we go half, five eighths. Now we do the same thing on the other side. This is the primary flow pole. We're going to back it off. You can see the linkage moving here. Back it all the way off to zero. Give yourself a little room. Slide the paper in underneath the stop. Bring it down until it just touches. And on this one, we're going to give it one full turn. Half, one. So now we have our four corner idle bleed set. We have our throttle speed set, primary and secondary. Let's just flip the carburetor over and do one more check. Let's make sure that our base plate screws are all tight. And as usual, they are. We don't usually have any problem with these screws, but we like to check everything. And again, this is a good time to do your pumps. Make sure they're all tight, which we did when we had the flow poles off. Now the carburetor is ready to bolt on the car and proceed with final tuning. Now, we set these at 3 quarters of a turn and 5 eighths of a turn, primary, secondary. We did the same thing by off-balancing the carburetor on the idle speed. We gave one full turn here, and we gave five-eighths of a turn on the secondary side. So what we've done is we've loaded the idle responsibility onto the primary side of the carburetor. That's where the power valve is. That runs eight jet sizes smaller. So we want all that idle speed and cruise to be on the front side of the carburetor to help it run nice and clean and give you a crisp idle. As you adjust the carburetor once it's on the car, when you add idle speed, you want to put say one quarter turn here, you want to go to the secondary side and put in one eighth of a turn. That way we maintain that sort of off balance effect in the carburetor. Pretty simple. Adjust your four corner bleeds the same way. Always keep the back secondaries the same and the primaries the same. Let's review all the components on the carburetor. These are your four corner bleeds. One, two, three, four. And when we're talking about idle adjustment, these are the screws we're talking about. Turning them in leans it down. Turning them counterclockwise or out adds more fuel. This is your idle speed. You have on a mechanical carburetor, you have two. You have one on the primary side, one on the secondary side. They need to be adjusted equally, but maintaining that slight off balance. These are your float screws. These are the locks. The needle and seat is attached to this nut. It goes down over a keyway, and as you turn the nut, you screw the needle and seat down lower and raise it to raise and lower the float. 
these are your squirters. That applies or puts a shot of fuel in as you accelerate to stop hesitation. It enriches the carburetor on rapid acceleration. Let's review here. Here's your, your high speed uh, air bleed and your idle air bleed. These are the boosters. You have four boosters. There's different types of boosters. These ones are down leg boosters. You can see the curve in the booster. It's a down leg. We have angular boosters which are much larger. That's in a different topic. These are the vents. These allow air to go into the flow poles. As the fuel is consumed, consumed you need to have a vent to replace the air, keep uh, ambient pressure neutral. Okay, these are your air bleeds. You have the idle air bleed here, your high speed air bleed here. They're the same on all four. What we want to do is make sure those are tight and the idle air bleeds are always larger on the idle circuit than they are on the primary circuit. The larger the hole, the less fuel goes into the carburetor, into the idle circuits. So if you wanted to lean down the carburetor to give yourself more adjustment on your four corner bleeds, you would simply enlarge in the hole. If you wanted to add fuel, you put a smaller bleed in. We have these as a kit. They come uh, blank and you just drill them to whatever size you want and again consult with the technical manual which will tell you what the stock size is and you can adjust from there. Now we'll flip the carburetor over and let's look at the base here. Right down here you'll see a slot. On each of the Venturi's there's a slot. Those are your transition slots. As you accelerate they add fuel. The small holes under or beside the slots, those are your idle jets. That's what allows the fuel in at idle. As you start to accelerate, it opens and exposes the transition slot to air, which causes it to pull more fuel and rich in the circuit to give you power to take off. Very simple system. You want to keep these down as far as possible. This carburetor is probably set to idle at around 1150 or 1200 for initial startup. Once you get the engine started, you can back off the idle speed screws and these will come down to about half of what's showing right now and give you a nice clean idle. So there you go. There's your Mighty Demon 650 ready to bolt on, turn the key, and have some fun.